Hey guys, we're at the Bohart Museum of Entomology. And this isn't just any museum. You'll never guess what's in all of these. Insects like these gorgeous butterflies can tell us a lot about climate change. Let's go find out more. Take your pick of bugs, creepy crawlies, or even these walking sticks. If it's an insect you're looking for, chances are you'll find it here at the Bohart Museum of Entomology on the campus of University of California, Davis. Senior scientist Steve Hayden makes sure everything's in order here, down to the tiniest of creatures. Steve, tell us about this museum. There's so much going on. We have about seven million insects in this museum. It's the second largest insect collection west of the Mississippi River. So why study bugs? Well, for one, they play an important role in our food chain. Bees give us honey, but also they give us like apples and apricots and all kinds of fruits through their pollination effort. And there's some small flies that give us chocolate when they pollinate the chocolate flowers on the chocolate plant in the tropics. Insects are also the backbone of our ecosystems. Mess with them and nature knows it. But a warming planet is threatening many species, changing plant habitats they rely on to survive. And in some cases, their habitat could be destroyed altogether. The rising of the sea levels as the ice sheets melt will actually end up covering some islands. And the insects on islands are commonly unique because the islands are isolated from other areas around them. That's bad news for creatures like this green guy. These are a kind of a walking stick that lives um, in some of the Caribbean islands. And this is an insect that might be affected by uh, climate change. Since being on an island, it has no place to go. It kind of has to sink or swim on the island. So here, you want to hold him? The walking sticks are definitely cool. But another big crowd pleaser here are the butterflies. That's Swallowtail from New Guinea. That's where Professor Art Shapiro comes in. He's known as the butterfly guy in these parts and beyond. In fact, Shapiro's behind one of the most extensive butterfly studies on record, funded by the National Science Foundation. Art's been trekking out to the same sites in Northern California and the Sierra Nevada for nearly 40 years. So he's seen what warming temperatures and habitat changes can do over time. We're in Gates Canyon, one of his study sites. Whew, so much stuff flying around. Let's catch up with him to see what we can spot out here today. A lot of California hair streaks. Who's that in the road? That's another buckeye. You were just buzzed by an echo blue. Here comes a pale swallowtail, my little crescent. There's a Lorquins Admiral right there. That's a farmer skipper. And there's a tailed copper down there. We're up to 23. There's a uh, buckeye posing right by the roadside. See him opening and closing mm -hmm. his wings? Let's see if I can catch one. Oh! You got it! Oh my gosh! What kind of butterfly is this? That's a Mylitha crescent. It's one that breeds on thistles. What kind of tree are we looking at and why is it so good for butterflies? It's the California buckeye. It is the best nectar mm -hmm. source for butterflies in late spring. It's habitat like this that plays a key role in insect survival. Are butterflies being affected by climate and how do we know? Definitely they are, and especially um, in extreme climates, particularly at high elevations in the mountains and in the Arctic and sub-Antarctic. So species that live in colder climates that are warming are the ones most in trouble. And back at the museum, Art shows me a few. This is one of the ones from my study sites in the Sierra, which is contracting apparently as a result of climate change. This is a butterfly known as an Arctic, found in very cold climates. They go all the way up to the shores of the Arctic Ocean. It's getting more local, more rare, and the marginal populations are apparently on their way out as a result of climate change. If the climate continues to be this way, what does this mean for butterflies? They're going to have to adapt or die. It's that simple. And it's the past that's filed away in these drawers that could help predict the future. You actually owe a lot more to insects than you really realize. So even the Earth's tiniest creatures are affected by climate change and other environmental factors. They can tell us a lot about the world we live in. <laughs>